Today's video will be taking a look at this Mitsubishi AUM1371 monitor. We review old technology from games to all PCs and don't forget the doll. We do our own get ancient electronics. We cover it all. Hello guys, and in today's probably rather short video we're going to take a quick look at this guy here so this is a Mitsubishi AUM 1371A monitor so this monitor is from 1986 so that makes it kind of a pre VGA monitor so this is kind of a I don't know what you call I don't know if you'd actually call this monitor a multi sync monitor because it doesn't do as far as I know uh, you know VGA which is a higher uh, kilohertz, but it does do digital and analog. So this monitor can handle multiple types of video. It can handle uh, composite out. It can handle analog RGB. It can also handle, you know, digital TTL for it's like uh, CGA and EGA type graphics. So we're going to take a look at this thing real quick. Um, Mitsubishi, in my own personal experience, now keep in mind this is my personal experience, so it may not be you know, the actual real-world reality here, but I've never run into Mitsubishi products too much out in the wild, uh, picking things up, but when I do, they tend to be pretty high quality. I'd say for every, say, 10 Sony or 10 JVC products I come across, I might stumble across one Mitsubishi product, and they're usually pretty high quality. Um, the last, uh, the last Mitsubishi VHS player I had, it didn't work, but it had a lot of neat features, and it seemed really high-end for the time it came out in the 80s. Uh, you know, whenever I think of, like, TV sets, whenever I think of the Mitsubishi sets, there always seem to be, like, big TVs. You know, I, I, maybe it's just my own personal experience. It just seems that usually, like, the bigger CRT sets I would usually come across were Mitsubishis. Um, monitors, they always seem to make really high quality monitors when I come around, like the Dimatrons, again, they're always big 19-20 uh, inch monitors, and they're always really high quality, so I don't know, that's kind of like my personal view of uh, Mitsubishi products. Uh, again, don't know if that reflects reality, but it's just how I've kind of come across them. So, this monitor, a uh, pretty interesting monitor, I haven't played around with it too much, uh, we'll do that a little bit today, uh, but we are going to see how well it works. I have powered it up. It does work, uh, but it's been a minute, um, so who knows? Maybe it won't work at this point. Um, now, this monitor does have a couple issues, uh, generally cosmetic, and uh, we'll take a look at them. So right here, I don't know if my monitor is going to be able to... I don't know if my camera is going to be able to see it real well. Okay, I see it. There is a crack in the plastic right there. As you can see, it's it's not terrible. Um, you can notice it uh, up close, but you don't notice it right away. I would like to fix that, but I'm not really good at repairs uh, so much. Um, I did ask on a forum uh, about, you know, possible repairs for plastic and stuff, and I got a lot of different great responses, but I'm really not sure how to go about it. I was told um, maybe I should drill a hole right down here where the crack ends to prevent it from spreading. Uh, a lot of different things that I should... Um, just coat it with like an epoxy and then paint, sand it and paint over it. I'm really not sure how to handle that. I, I definitely don't want it to get worse over time, but I don't want to try to repair it and then make it look way worse or just make it worse, which in all honesty I might do because again, I'm not really great with uh, repairing things like that. That's one flaw with the monitor. It doesn't really affect how the monitor works though. Um, now the other thing is you probably can't see it here, but on the screen um, it's it's hard to see where it is. There is a scuff. There, I, okay, there it is. Right there, if you can see that. So there are a couple scratches and scuffs on the screen of this monitor. There's no protective, um, you know, there's no like protective coating on this. That, I can feel it, that is on the glass of the monitor. Uh, so as far as I know, and I tried doing a lot of research, there's no way to fix that. Uh, I mean, other than disassemble the thing and put in another tube, which you're probably better off just finding another monitor. <laughs> so, yeah, unfortunately, it, it, that scratch, I don't think I can do anything about it. 
Now the good thing is when you're actually using the monitor and you have an image displayed and it's kind of bright in different colors, you can't really notice it to be honest. Um, at least from my last experience with it. Now maybe if you have like a light color and the whole screen is one color, uh, you might be able to notice it more then. But you know, just generally playing a game, it's not horribly noticeable, but it still is a bummer that it's there. So um, now that that's out of the way, let's take a look at this thing real quick. Um, again, not a whole lot. It's it's pretty. You don't have a lot of knobs or things like that. Um, you have your power button right here. You have a little power indicator light there, and then right underneath. So you're not really going to be able to see them well, but there are two knobs pretty well hidden right here and then there's one right next to them and the one right here uh, farthest to the left that is a brightness knob and I'm not sure what the other one I think the other one might be contrast if you're using the uh, the analog uh, inputs on the back so I'm not hundred percent sure um, so let's turn this guy around and take a look at it so here's the back of the monitor and you can see we have a lot of little uh, inputs and little uh, like dials and adjustments and things like that. Uh, so let's take a look here at the label. We got Mitsubishi color monitor. Uh, there's our model number AUM uh, 1371A and then we go and we see we have a uh, manufacture date of December 1986. Uh, so I believe VGA came out in 1987 so this is uh, pre VGA. Uh, let's take a look down here. We have a standard three-prong power connector. Uh, right there we have a normal and monochrome switch. Normal is just color. I believe this is like fake or emulated monochrome. So if you have a color image and you flip that to monochrome, it just, the only color that comes through is green. So it gives you kind of that fake uh, green, kind of green phosphor effect. Seen that on many different monitors. Uh, so right there we have two inputs. The top one is TTL, so that would be your digital input. So uh, if you have a computer or something that's outputting like CGA or EGA, you can hook it up right there to that uh, nine pin, and it will work fine as like a CGA or EGA monitor. I believe I believe it will also work with like monochrome and Hercules cards as well. Um, so underneath it just says analog. So I believe I believe that is just analog RGB. So I believe that's like, again, I'm not a technical guy, so I think that's like the 15 kilohertz. I would guess that if you had the adapter that you could hook up, say, video game consoles to that and get RGB. I, I'm not 100% sure. That looks very much like the RGB analog connector on a, me a lot of Amiga computers. Unfortunately, even though I have an Amiga, I do not have the right cable or adapter, so I cannot test uh, this input right here, uh, but I believe that would work. If you had the right adapter, I believe that would let this monitor hook up pretty easily to something like an Amiga, or like I said, if you had an adapter like a, a console and that did uh, RGB, you might be able to get like a SCART to whatever this kind of connector adapter made and use it like that, although I'm not 100% sure. Uh, so over there a little bit. Here's some more things. Uh, right there we have video in. So you can use a little, uh, that's that's a BNC connector. So you could use something like, oh, if I can, try I better zoom out. You can use something like this BNC to RCA, and that's just a composite in. So you can put one of these on, and then you should be able to just hook up some uh, something through composite. So you, you could hook up, say, a VCR or an NES through composite, and it should work just fine uh, theoretically anyways so there's the video type selector so we have video TTL and analogs so the video would be composite right there and then the analog would be that that connector right there and then your TTL would be right there which would be CGA EJ stuff like that above that we have scan mode we have over and under scan again not a really technical guy, so I'm not 100% sure. I, I believe uh, you wanted an overscan, and I think underscan makes the image smaller. Uh, again, not 100% sure. And then we have you know, a bunch of little adjustment uh, knobs right there. We have color, tint, uh, horizontal position, vertical position, horizontal size, and vertical size. So that's nice. That's a nice like array of you know your most common adjustments you would 
want to be making. So that's pretty nice. So yeah, it's kind of a cool monitor, but it is really cool that it has like a wide range of, of uh, inputs it can take. Again, EGA monitors are rare as hen's teeth, and this should work as a full EGA monitor, which is really nice. Um, so let's test that out. Uh, like I said, I don't have the adapters or cables to test the analog uh, connector input right there, but we can definitely test this 9-pin uh, TTL with something. Um, maybe try to display like some EGA and see how it looks. And then maybe if I can find something kicking around here, um, I could connect something to the composite and just see how it looks. Alright, so here we go. I have the monitor hooked up to a computer. Uh, underneath it, it's a 286 and it has an EGA card in it. Um, so let's see how this thing does. I have set it uh, to TTL on the back. So uh, let's see if it actually displays. So I'm going to hit the power right here. And the monitor's on. Now I'm going to power on the computer. And then I'll turn that light off in a moment. Um, oh, there we go. So it is working. Um, it's a little bit... It's a little bit off. Uh, so let me... Let me see here. So I am going to... Let's try that under scan switch. See? Yeah, see that actually kind of works, makes things a little bit smaller, um, but that's what that under scan, so under scan, over scan, but it looks like we just need to change the, maybe we could change the horizontal size a little bit, there we go, and there, it's, it's close to the edge, but it looks like we're getting uh, pretty much everything, uh, so let me see. Yeah, brightness seems okay. Yeah, it seems all right. So let's see uh, if we can run a game on this thing. I'm just going to try, say, Prince of Persia, since we've seen that game before on multiple uh, monitors. Uh, so maybe I can compare a little bit. All right, so I'm going to run Prince of Persia. don't know how well um, you can see. Here, I'm going to turn, turn the light off. So that should help a little bit. It actually looks really nice and crisp, especially compared to some of the CGA monitors I've run this game on, um, like the uh, Tandy CM5 monitor and the Amdec uh, Color monitor. Um, it looks it looks a lot sharper than either of those monitors. So uh, hopefully, okay, yeah, it actually looks really good. It looks kind of squished, um, but other than that, that can probably be adjusted. It actually looks pretty nice. Now you can see right here where the, the G was, um, it was a little blurred because that is where that, uh, so that's where that kind of scuff is right there. So I mean, it it's, it is definitely noticeable, which is a shame because this monitor actually looks really nice now that I'm, I'm looking at it. Um, but it, yeah, it is noticeable. You you definitely can see it right here. But it doesn't make it unusable. I mean, it's just a small part of the of the image. It, it's kind of a bummer that it's kind of almost right in the middle. Uh, so your eye, you really can't miss it. But it's not that bad. Yeah, you can see it just blurs right here because of that scuff. But man, other than that, this monitor looks really nice. Um, let me see if I could do a couple more adjustments. So yeah, I adjusted the uh, horizontal position a little bit to give it more of a center, uh, center of the image. And uh, I adjusted the vertical size a little bit too, uh, to kind of cover more of the screen. It almost looked like it was in widescreen mode there. Um, but yeah, it probably could use a little bit. I could probably adjust the uh, horizontal size a little bit more as well, uh, maybe. Uh, but overall, yeah, it it looks good, um, except again for this blur uh, right there. But uh, you know, it's it's not a deal breaker. It's just it's just a shame that it's there because this is this is a really nice monitor um, with its different abilities. You know, it, it might make a good like test bench monitor where it's like sitting on the bench and you're hooking things up to it to test it. Unfortunately, I probably wouldn't use this monitor for like gaming or anything just because that blur 
in the middle on the glass would drive me crazy but I'm sure there's there's people out there would just be thrilled to have a monitor that does uh, EGA um, you know scuff and scratch be darned but uh, yeah unfortunately it annoys me a little bit much but it's it's not too bad but I, I do I do really like the image on this thing. Um, again, when, I, when we're talking about monitors on this channel and I'm showing TVs and, and monitors like this, you know, I'm just pointing the, the camera at the screen and it doesn't do it justice. This, this thing looks nice. It is not the best image I've seen from, you know, a monitor of this type, but it's, it's still pretty good. So yeah, it kind of upholds my sort of mental image of uh, Mitsubishi products being fairly high end so uh, let me try that mono switch on the back just show you really quick I'm gonna okay so I'm gonna flip that switch on the back to mono mode and oh that's interesting <laughs> it's like it's red um, that's strange huh I wonder how that works I thought it just kind of made it like green phosphor but it's like it's all red I've never quite seen that before so okay I don't know all right so uh, all right so let's try hooking up something to the composite input on this monitor I have I have never tested the um, the composite video in on this monitor so that should be interesting so I'm um, let me find something to hook up to it and test that one out all right, so this is Stryker's 1945, and you can tell the monitor still needs some adjustment. Uh, look, the sides here uh, looks like it's kind of bowed in a, a little bit. Uh, you could probably mess around with the adjustments uh, a little bit and fix that. But other than that, it looks pretty decent. Uh, of course, no sound. There's no speakers on this monitor uh, of any type. It's not a big deal. But yeah, it doesn't look bad. Uh, of course, like I said, with a couple, a little bit more adjusting. Um, I think I can squeeze a little bit better image out of this guy. Uh, so yeah, I'm, pr I'm like I said, I'm pretty sure with the right adapter you could hook this thing up to the analog and uh, you get yourself uh, some analog RGB. But even over the composite, like I said, it's not the best um, composite I have seen uh, over an old monitor. But I mean, it, it is not bad for, you know, when, what is this, like a 30 plus year old monitor 1986 so it was a long time ago so yeah it's it's definitely definitely usable so that's pretty cool So there we have the Mitsubishi AUM-1371A, uh, nice monitor, uh, it seems to work pretty well. Fortunately I couldn't really test the analog on it, but I'm, I'm pretty confident it probably works. Um, unfortunately, you know, it's got that those cosmetic issues, it's got the crack there as we talked about and the, the scratch on the glass. If anyone out there knows any tricks that, that might fix the glass or help with the glass let me know but I'm pretty sure that's something that just can't be fixed unfortunately um, the crack on the other hand I, I'm pretty sure there's ways to kind of mend that but again I'm not really handy with things like that so um, I don't know but if anyone has any suggestions or anything let me know in the comments if you have any comments about this uh, monitor in general I'd love to hear them but yeah I just thought it was an interesting monitor and my uh, CRT collection. I thought it deserved a quick shout out and a quick look at in a video. So if you like this video, uh, let us know in the comments. Hit that like button and uh, I'll see you in the next video. Thank you for watching.